Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss auditing through the computer. In the prior session, we looked at auditing around the computer. When do we use auditing through the computer? Well, we do so when we have a more complex IT environment. What does that mean? It means the source documents for the accounting information system exist only electronically or mostly electronically. Source documents are customer purchase orders, shipping documents, receiving documents, sales and vendor invoices, so on and so forth. In auditing through the computer, we are testing the input and the processing step. Then if we, if we have the input and the processing, we're going to have an output. In contrast to the auditing around the computer, auditing around the computer, we focus on the input and the output. We did not touch processing. Here, we're going to look at the processing. We're going to look at the computer information system and test that system itself. There are various methods to audit through the computer, and those are test data approach, embedded audit module approach, which is called integrated test facilities, parallel simulation or parallel testing, and tagging transaction. Let's go ahead and look at each section separately, each method separately, starting with test data approach. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Test data approach is where the auditor input their own data, their own data into the client system in an offline environment to check the accuracy of the automated control. Here, you might have to use a specialist to make sure you are putting the proper data and you are testing the control that you, you need to test. So basically, the auditor will create scenarios where the system should either approve or deny a transaction. This could be an example of it. For example, we will try to input an invalid employee ID. For example, if the employee ID is supposed to be composed of six digits, we'll try to do seven digits or eight digits. If there is a secret formula for the employee ID, for example, or employee ID should add up to the number 15. So simply put, we have to use employee ID such as three, two, five, plus six, 11, plus four. So for example, this is a valid ID, three, two, six, four, or four, six, two, three. Why? Because when we add all the digits, they add up to 15. Now we don't tell anyone in the system that's happening, but we'll try to add some employee IDs to see if the system will accept or not. Also, we will, we will try to input access hours. For example, each employee should work maximum of 40 hours. For example, we should put more, see if the system will accept or not. Or we should process sales order over the credit limits. Will it accept it or not? After processing, auditor compared the system's result to expected outcome to determine the effectiveness of the control. Obviously, if anything should not be accepted, it should be rejected. And this is how we use test data approach to test the system internal control effectiveness. When should we process this internal control test, the test data approach well we should be carried unexpectedly we should not let we should not tell them when we're doing this why because they could change the system to make it comply in compliance then once we leave they could change it back so it should be a surprise and we should remove all the data that we input into the client system once we are done let's take a look at an example let's assume we're auditing a bank and we are looking to check there's the software that approves the loans which is a very important process for a bank okay auditor input test data into a loan application with very high credit score and stable income for a client that it should be approved because they have a high score and stable income and will put data for a low credit score and no income which the application should be rejected and would run it through their system okay the data should include not only this information, all relevant conditions. So we have to have a realistic data as much as possible that auditor needs to assess. And that's why we need the specialist. The bank system, if it's working properly, it should approve the high score application and it should re reject the low score one. 
Now, this is what should happen. I'm going to tell you a story, a real story that happened with my wife and I with a national retailer. I'm not going to name the retailer, but it happened a few years ago where we were buying from this national retailer and the credit card for my wife's account was expired. So if you look at the credit card, let's assume it's, you know, uh, January 3rd, 20X4. Okay, well, we were processing this transaction in 20X5. So the credit card, if you look at it physically, it was expired. Nevertheless, my wife was able to use that credit card to make a purchase. And we did not notice until after the fact. And that's, I believe, that's a major internal control issue where the system is accepting expired credit card. So I'm not really sure. For example, this is a test that can be done trying to test a credit card to see if it goes through or not. So this is what testing data is. Another approach is embedded audit module or EAM. It's similar to test and data except, here we go, you are using a live or online environment. So the system is live. However, you are using dummy accounts. You're not using real account. And obviously you wanna remove those at the end of the testing. So EAM, Embedded audit module is a mechanism used by auditor to verify and validate the processing of transaction. In this approach, an audit module is embedded. It means integrated or integrated directly into the client software application. So you embed this approach to capture and assess data transaction automatically. So basically you're putting like a software within the system to monitor what's going on. This module is designed to identify and report anything that's unusual, anomalies, exceptions that might indicate errors, fraud, or other irregular activities. Any differences between the clients and auditor results should appear on an exception report for further auditor review. So this is what you're doing. You're trying to, but you, what you're trying to do is embed, means putting everything in, embedding, embedding it into the system. It's in the system constantly. Let's take a look at an example. Let's assume we have a large retail chain that uses a sophisticated point of sale system to record its sales transaction. And that's usually the case in most places. Well, the auditor wishes to ensure that every sales transaction is recorded accurately without any intentional or unintentional errors or manipulation. Well, that's fine. So the first thing they have to do is they have to identify any susceptible areas to errors or manipulation. So they're saying they need to identify which areas we need to focus on. And here we're gonna do, we're gonna look at transactions that are voided after being completed, refund issued without proper documentation or approval, and sales ma made outside regular business hours. So we embedded this system, think of it as a software inside the system looking for these unusual transactions. The auditor worked with the IT team, again with a specialist, to embed an audit module into the POS system. This module is designed to capture detail of every transaction that meet any criteria identified in the first step. Now, the good thing about this, it's doing this in real-time monitoring. A sales transaction occur, the EAM continuously monitor and logs any transaction that matches the specified criteria. And EAM are great also for what? For internal auditors. For example, if a sales is made outside business hours, the EAM would capture the record and the transaction and it will flag it. It will flag it. It would report it. It would report it to the auditor detailing all the captured transaction. And this report could be reviewed daily, weekly, monthly. As I said, this is a good system also for internal auditor. Depending on the auditor's requirement, it will be analyzed, reviews, reviewed and adjustment made as needed. The benefit of the embedded system, it's consistently monitoring transaction. Unlike intermittent testing, which is test of data, and we're gonna see parallel simulation, it's only as a point in time. The embedded audit approach, it's consistently monitoring the system. That's why it's a great technique for internal auditors to monitor the company's transaction on a real-time basis. Then we have what's called the parallel or simulation testing or parallel testing. Well, here what you're doing is you are auditing around the computer. It's similar to around the computer. You're not going through the computer. It's similar to that. What is a parallel? Parallel is two lines that don't meet, something like that, what you have on the screen in front of you. So the auditor use another software here, not the client, to replicate the client operation using the same data files. So let's assume this is the client and this is the auditor. 
what you do is you would use data from the client you input it into the auditor and vice versa to see what would happen to the transaction you can you might also use an archive copy of the software you might ask for 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 them to provide you an archive copy it means a copy that's not live and you would do the parallel testing with the live one making sure the code are the same for both copies you might develop your own software it all depends on how sophisticated the audit engagement is and that's going to be costly by itself you might use also generally audit software package and we'll discuss this later on which will help you kind of generate some totals hash totals to determine if the sums are correct the goal in all of this is to assess the automated control effectiveness and verify electronic account balances. Are we getting to the same results? If two systems are working, well, if they should be the same system, they should give you the same results. So expecting the same results. The results from the auditor software are compared to the client output to ensure the client software accuracy and balances are correct. An example of a parallel simulation or testing, let's go back to that bank example. The bank has a software that determines if a loan should be approved based on several factors, such as credit, score, income, and employment history. Well, the first thing that the auditor will do is use their own software to evaluate the loan application with the criteria to decide whether to approve it or deny it. Now you're not using the, the system for the auditor, you're using your own system. And you compare this, you also feed the information into the into the client system for each loan application the decision made by the bank software should align with the decision made by the auditor software they should both give you the same outcome if both decision matches all application well it means that the software is operating effectively and making consistent decision if there is a discrepancy in any of the decision it might indicate an error or an inconsistency in the bank software or the auditor's tool could could be the problem on our end we'll have to investigate further Tagging transaction or transaction, this is also mostly used by internal auditor, but it also could be used by external auditor. And what's tag? And look at this cow, it's being tagged. And tag means we're following this cow everywhere it goes on the field. Where is it eating? Where is spending most of its time? This is what tagging is. Transaction tagged is where transaction record is tagged and then traced through the critical points in the information system to monitor what's going on. It's a process to mark specific transaction for further review analysis or categorization so we want to know where it went and is it being ending up in the right place it provides a mean to identify unusual or potentially fraudulent activities here we're using the client data and the client's program because we're using their data and your their program to tag it through the system because we want to know if their system their transactions are working properly and let's take a look at a summary of the automated auditing systems. The first one is the embedded audit module. Which data do we use? We use either the client data and or the auditor data. We could use our data or their data. The software we will use for the embedded audit module, of course, it's going to be the live online client software. Because what we're trying to do is in real time, we're trying to see if the system is working properly, embedding a software within the client software. Data test approach is the second automated auditing technique. Which data are we using? We're also using the auditor's data. However, we have to use a specialist to review the data. Offline client system. We don't use data test approach in an online environment. We use it in an offline client system. So we use it, but not in real life. The third method is parallel simulation or parallel testing. Here we are using the client data and we are auditing around the computer the software that we're using not the system because it's a parallel it's a parallel to the client so the client has their system we are using a different system to determine if we're getting to the same outcome the fourth approach is the tagging of transaction which is mostly used by internal auditor we are using the client data and of course we're doing this in live real time because we want to see if the system is working remember this is for internal auditors now let's take a look at the benefits for each approach remember the client or the auditor can combine several tests usually they don't but if they do we need to know the benefits for each approach test data which is this one here is best for control test and transaction testing parallel simulation it's good for in-depth testing like recalculating amount making sure we're arriving to the same amount embedded 
module and slash tagging as you know embedded module and tagging are basically very similar to spot a regular transaction for detailed examination let's take a look at a multiple choice from four hat lectures to help us kind of basically consolidate our knowledge to examine those small subtles between you know the different type of auditing through the computer or auditing around the computer Let's take a look at this. Which of the following statement regarding the test data approach is correct? Now we're looking at test data approach. Well, let's take a look at the four option. The test must be performed at the end of the year. Well, well, is it a good idea to test it at the end of the year? Yeah, it might be a good idea to test it at, at the end of the year to make sure the system is being tested at the end of the year. But if you kind of indicate, or if that's what you do on a regular basis, test perform the test data approach at the end of the year and the client is aware of this, guess what? The client will make sure the system is working properly at the end of the year. And you don't want to do that. When do you want to do test data approach? Surprise. You don't want to tell the client when you're doing this. Therefore, A is not the answer. It doesn't have to be the end of the year. It could be. It doesn't have to be. It must be. No, it, it doesn't have to be. Auditor must keep the test data and the client master file after the tests are completed. No, those are test data. Remove them once you are done. Remove them once you are done. Auditor who use the test data approach often obtain assistance from a computer audit specialist. Do you need a specialist to do that? I would say you will need a specialist for test data approach. Why? Because you want to simulate the closest thing to reality. So you want to make sure you have all the relevant elements in the data that's going to simulate that's going to give you the best output. So C is a good candidate, but let's look at D. Auditor pro pro process test data designed by the client using the client computer system. Okay, let's, let's look at D. Do we do this in a test data approach? Do we use the client computer system? Yes, we use the client computer system. Do we use the data that's designed by the client? No, not at all. This is where the test data approach, we don't use the client data. Okay, We can use their system, that's fine. We're testing their system, but we don't use their data. We use our data. We create the data that's gonna help us see the outcome that we want to see. Therefore, D is incorrect because we are, we're not, you, the data is not designed by the client, the data is designed by the auditor, and that's why we might need a specialist. Therefore, the answer is C. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, True false additional lectures that's going to help you with auditing around the computer, auditing through the computer. Automated auditing is an important topic and an auditing course, the CPA exam. Invest in yourself. Good luck and stay safe.